Across the globe, the Civic nameplate is a very important vehicle for Honda. In fact, in the last 50 years since production started, the Civic has become synonymous, of course, with efficiency, durability, and a fun-to-drive feel. Now, over the last five decades, of course, Honda has redesigned the Civic 11 times now. They've made it more powerful, they've made it more luxurious, they've made it more tech-focused. And last year, we saw a completely redesigned Civic sedan that also saw the discontinuation of the Civic Coupe. Now, for those of you who want a different body style, of course, we knew that the hatchback was coming and for 2022, the redesigned hatchback is here. And as you can see, it shares the styling cues as the Civic sedan. You also have an option of a four-cylinder base engine or a turbocharged engine. And of course, the biggest difference with the hatch is that more stylish rear end, which gives you more space, and of course, the availability of a six-speed manual transmission. So if you guys are in the market for your first vehicle ever, or your first new vehicle ever, how does the completely redesigned Civic hatchback stack up? Stay tuned to find out. Hey guys, I wanna interrupt this video for a special announcement. Now, did you know that two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? The best way to prevent this is to do something about it while you still have the hair left. This is where our sponsor comes in, Keeps, because Keeps is designed to treat and prevent even more hair loss. Now, the best thing about Keeps is that a licensed doctor will review your information online in order to best determine the exact treatment plan that will work right for you. Once they've determined that, they'll actually ship the product discreetly to your home and it'll be automatically renewed every three months so you don't even have to think about it. Now, prevention is the key and Keeps treatments can take up to four to six months for individual results to show, which is why you need to start sooner in order to prevent even more hair loss. Now, I've been using Keeps for the last year and a half. And I have to say, I'm really impressed with the overall progress of my hair. It's really come back in a much fuller way. And all I have to do is just take one small pill a day and use a mousse twice a day in my hair or basically every time that I get out of the shower. Now, if you're ready to take action and prevent even more hair loss, please be sure to visit www.keeps.com forward slash redline where you can save up to 50% off of your first order. That's K-E-E-P-S.com forward slash redline. And now let's get back to the video. Now, of course, when Honda was tasked with redesigning the Civic for 2021 on the sedan version, they had some pretty big shoes to fill because the 10th generation Civic was such a radical departure from the disappointing 9th generation that Honda kind of played it safe with the exterior design. So as you can see, approaching the brand new Civic hatchback, this particular one here that I'm showing you is the top of the line sport touring grade, which you can't even get this trim on the sedan. The Honda offers the hatch in four different trims, starting at the base LX to sport to the EXL, which you can't get on the sedan as well. And of course, this top of the line sport touring grade. Now, the beauty about this generation Civic is every one of them comes standard with full LED headlights. So you have LED low and high beams, LED turn signals, and then the sport touring grade is the only trim to give you the LED fog lights, which also make it look a lot more upscale. The grill is also slightly different on the hatch. You have this kind of a hexagonal pattern, a uh, different kind of texture in the actual grill. It definitely looks a little bit more aggressive, but still very Accord-like, very mature looking. And from this angle, you can't even tell that this is the hatch version of this car because it, remember, it shares the same front fascia, of course, for some different pieces versus the, uh, versus the uh, sedan counterpart part. Now, this particular one here is the Sport Touring painted in Sonic Gray Pearl. It's one of my favorite colors that Honda offers, although they do offer a beautiful boost blue, but you can't get it on the Sport Touring if you choose the manual. The manual is only available in this gray, a white, and a black exterior. Honda tends to limit the manual to certain color options. Now, looking at the wheels, the Sport Touring has a really attractive set of 18-inch wheels. You can see they're wrapped in 235 40 width Continental tires. They have this beautiful machine look with the black inner spokes. The brakes are the same brakes you're gonna find on other vehicles. Honda doesn't upgrade the brakes on this model. You'll have to get wait for like an SI for something like that to go for upgraded brakes. But looking at the rest of the profile, you can see as I back up, the Civic hatch is about two inches longer versus the previous generation at 179 inches in overall length. It shares the same 107.7 inch wheelbase. The wheelbase has been stretched by about 1.4 inches versus the previous generation. Now you can see here the Sport Touring comes standard with a sunroof. Uh, that's gonna be included if you guys go for the EXL trims and up. Honda still does not offer a panel roof, which would be nice. And then looking at it from this angle, this is my first time seeing the hatch in person and you can really see a lot of European design elements here. Honda in fact said that they studied vehicles like the BMW Grand Coupe, the 4 Series Grand Coupe, the Audi A5, uh, the Mercedes-Benz CLS, the Porsche Panamera to come up with their rear design. And it definitely almost looks very much like a Kia Stinger to me. I love the way that the taillights look with this kind of 
interconnecting taillight that connects the two modules together. The taillights you can see are an incandescent and LED design combination. These two are just an incandescent bulb. You have a sport touring badge here. And then you can see the rear bumper is a little more aggressive. You have a diffuser along with chrome exhaust tips, but you can see these are just trim pieces. The actual muffler is not attached to that chrome piece. And the touring model also gives you these well-integrated parking sensors. Now, opening up the cargo area, Honda does not offer our power liftgate on the Civic, which are on the hatch, which is pretty much the norm in this segment. And compared to the SAM, which only has about 14 cubic feet of space, you have 24 and a half cubic feet of space back here, which is definitely an improvement. You can see there's still this really cool cargo cover that kind of goes from the other side, uh, where you can still pull this out and put it onto the other side if you'd like. Open this up right here. You can see Honda gives you a temporary spare tire a small amount of storage over here. And if you fold down these rear seats, I was looking for figures with this rear seat folded, but Honda doesn't have those readily available. The previous generation offered around 46 and a half cubic feet. This one should be around the same, if not a little bit more because this is a bigger vehicle. So now let's move on to the inside of the 2022 Civic hatchback. And if you guys like the inside of the sedan, this is practically the same thing, but the hatch does have a couple of smaller differences here and there. Now getting inside, you can see, I hope you guys like this black interior color combination because it's the only interior color you can get on the Sport Touring hatchback, uh, especially if you guys go for the manual, they limit it on the colors on the outside and on the inside. When I shut the door, the door has a nice solid sounding thunk, which you really appreciate, gives you an impression of quality. Uh, and you can see here's the key fob. This is Honda's newest key fob system. Their smart key access system does come if you guys go for the EXL or the sport grade and up trims. Now putting the, or to start the vehicle up, Honda puts the button right here where you'd expect it to, although the steering wheel does kind of block it. Of course, because this is a manual, you have to put the clutch in. And the fact that it is a manual is the biggest difference, of course, between this and the sedan. You can't even get a stick shift in the sedan version of this vehicle, uh, which is nice that Honda actually saved it for the hatch because I believe enthusiasts are going to go for the hatch model more anyways. You can see the Sport Touring grade gives you the fully digital uh, display here. I believe it's a 10-inch display for the instrument panel. The other trims, all the other lower trims will have a half digital, half analog on the right side, which will be analog as opposed to the all digital. This is very Acura-like. In fact, when I turn on the adaptive cruise control, you can see I put my foot on the brake, the brake lights actually light up in the hatch. The same thing is true when you turn on the turn signals. The turn signals turn on and off, which is kind of very Tesla-like. It's a really nice um, feature that Honda is showing that they're really trying to improve their technology. It was behind for many, many years. Now, looking at the rest of this dash design, you can see beautiful looking interior with this really interesting dashboard vent, which has real metal that kind of covers over the vent. It kind of extends the entire length of the dash, continues, of course, over here on the passenger side. Uh, the materials back here also are in the front seat are also nice. You have a soft touch injection molded plastic, uh, metal accented door handles, window controls, front windows are one touch automatic up and down. The rear is not one touch up or down. I wish Honda had just made that standard on the sport touring grade. You have this kind of textured a carbon fiber look plastic trim, some real stitching over here, nice padded leather area with contrasting stitching, more piano black plastic here on the door handles. And then when you look at the steering wheel, you can see this is the same new steering wheel we find on the sedan. It is a tilt and telescoping wheel, gives you a good amount of adjustability, which is really easy to find a comfortable driving position. The seats, the driver's side here is a an eight way power with a no lumbar adjustments though. I'm surprised that Honda did not include lumbar on the Civic. Uh, that's something that I guess you have to go for the hatch. They also don't offer memory seats on the Civic. So again, you have to go for an Accord, not for the hatch. An Accord's gonna offer you, the, offer you those features. Same thing with the heated seats. You have three level heated seats on this trim. On the EXL trim, you'll have that as well, but you cannot get cooled seats. Honda's not gonna offer that because they're gonna want you again to upgrade to the Accord. You have these beautiful uh, dials for the climate control and for the fan speed. You can see very nice, satisfying click. It's the same kind of system that we find from the Accord, which is nice, more piano black plastic trim. There's two USB ports over there. Honda continues to use the older USB-A outlets. You have a wireless phone charging pad there, which is nice. Also good for storage. Uh, you have an electronic parking brake, which some enthusiasts may bark at because you'd rather have that to be uh, a, a hand, hand brake when you guys have the manual transmission. More of that same texturized carbon fiber look plastic trim. Nice big cup holders over here, padded area over here. And if you open this up, you can see the center console is a little bit on the small side. It is pretty deep. It's just not very big. Um, the seats, as you can see, leather is included on the Sport Touring grade. You can also get leather on the EXL trim. That's something you can't get on the um, sedan. You have to go for a Touring to get leather. And the seats are pretty comfortable and supportive. Honda has re-engineered uh, the seats to offer better support as well as slightly more aggressive bolstering. They're not really any different versus the seats that you find in the sedan. 
Uh, over here in the glove compartment area, you can see it's a bin style. It's damped, but not lined with felt. It's a pretty decent size. Now, let me quickly touch base on the infotainment system of this car. You can see this is the larger nine inch touchscreen here that does include wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. If you guys want um, the wireless feature, you have to go for the Sport Touring Grade. It's the only one that gives you the nine inch display. All the other Civics will have a seven inch display that includes standard wired connection for the Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You can see the graphics look good. They're definitely updated. Um, the phone display looks pretty good over here. If you wanna go back to the Honda display there, click on that Honda display. You can see there's the Honda Link infotainment system. This is practically the same one that I've shown you in the Accord. It definitely is better versus what the old Civic had, but I think Honda, it's time for them to give us a completely new system. This does not include features like wireless over the air updates, which would be nice to have. It does have factory embedded GPS, as you can see, as it loads up. This is, I believe, a Garmin based system and Honda has been making improvements to this over the years. It's not bad. It's relatively quick and responsive. Uh, but again, this system here, I was hoping for them to give us a new infotainment system. I imagine they're working on that for their next next generation of vehicles, which would be uh, nice to have. When you put the vehicle into reverse, you can see there's your backup camera. The graphics aren't really wonderful. It does give you three different angle views, but there's no 360 camera. It does have rear cross traffic alert, which is great. But if you're looking for 360 camera, again, Honda will have you want to wait for an Acura model whenever the new Acura Integra comes out or something like that, or a redesigned ILX. Um, so overall, the infotainment system looks good. I like how there is a physical volume knob, although I would be nice if they also gave you a tuning knob. Um, the 12 speaker Bose stereo system in the touring grade also sounds really good. It's the first time we're seeing an actual branded audio system in a Honda Civic. Um, so it's nice to see that. But overall, it's got nice interior space. It's got good tech materials. It's got good storage options. It offers a manual transmission. It's got comfortable seats. This is still one of the best interiors in the segment. Even though the infotainment system, you have to go for the sport touring to get all of the latest tech features. Now, because Honda made the Civic hatch larger this year, they did increase the rear seat room of this vehicle. So it now matches the space that you find in the sedan. Now, looking at the back seat, you can see legroom this year increases to 37 and a half inches, which is about an inch and a half more versus the previous generation hatchback. You can see the sport touring grade also includes the same nice leather in the back seats that you get in the front seats. And as I climb into the back seat back here, you can see there's definitely a generous amount of space. Let me get in here and shut the door. You can see legroom is really nice for somebody my height. I mean, I'm five foot seven, so I'm not the tallest person. There is a pretty large hump here, surprisingly, that takes up the space for the middle passenger. I'm surprised this is not a flat floor. You can see Honda did include USB uh, outlets back here. Still no rear seat air vents. I would have liked to see them add rear seat air vents and you only get one map pocket here on the passenger side. But uh, looking at the rest of the seat, you can see these fold down in a 60-40 manner, as I showed you earlier. And there's a nice armrest here that folds down, gives you two cup holders. So really Honda could have added a couple of things back here that would have liked. There is LED lighting. The sunroof does take up some space back here, but they really should have added rear seat air vents and perhaps even the option of heated rear seats. Now moving underneath the hood of the brand new Civic, there is a big change here this year. The engines practically mirror that of the sedan, but it's technically a downgrade because now the standard engine is the company's two liter naturally aspirated four cylinder, which offers up 158 horsepower. That comes with either a manual or an automatic transmission. Now, if you guys go for the EXL and upgrades, you're going to have the 1.5 liter direct injection turbocharged four cylinder. We know this engine, of course, uh, it now adds exhaust VTEC. So now this is a VTEC engine versus the earlier generations did not have VTEC on the 1.5. And of course, Honda says that they have the two liter available because this vehicle is now built in North America. It's built in their Canada and Ohio. Uh, plants as opposed to the UK. And in the UK, they didn't have access to the two liter, but now that they do, the 1.5 is now the optional engine. Now it's, it makes the same horsepower as the sedan, 180 horsepower and 177 pound feet of torque. That's an increase Honda says of about six horsepower versus the previous generation. They've also retuned this engine to offer more low end torque and also be more usable at a lower RPM. You can still take your pick between a six speed manual like my tester, which is a no cost option or a CVT, which again, no cost option. The CVT is gonna get the better gas mileage option, but with the manual, this is rated at 28 in the city, 37 on the highway. Regular gas, of course, is the recommended fuel. All Civics continue to remain front wheel drive. Honda does not offer a hybrid version and they don't offer an all wheel drive version and no plug-in hybrid version as well. Now, Civics are still relatively small, lightweight vehicles. And as this one sits, it weighs in at just over 3000 pounds. Ha, 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 ha.
All right, so now we are driving the brand new 2022 Honda Civic hatchback and bless you Honda for still offering a manual transmission and offering the manual transmission on this model. This is the top of the line sport touring trim. I just, I wasn't expecting Honda to offer a manual on the fully loaded version with the 1.5 liter turbo. That was just completely unexpected of them. And I love that it's here because it makes this car such a joy to drive. If you're, if you're missing the fact that Volkswagen doesn't offer the Golf anymore, immediately I can tell you this car feels like it's a worthy replacement to a Golf. In fact, it's an even better feeling car than the Golf because it's so good. And you can get it with all the bells and whistles, all the trimmings, and that's what makes this car super special is the fact that they offer that. Now I am just outside of Austin here and I do want to try to test out the zero to 60 because we have the one with the manual transmission. So let's go ahead and see what I can get here. Oh, oh God, it's too much wheel spin. <laughs> I got 8.4 seconds there, 8.44 seconds, which obviously is not a fantastically fast time, but you guys heard this car does not have a limited slip differential, but it's got a really willing, responsive 1.5 liter engine that just loves to rev. Um, <laughs> I actually really enjoyed just kind of pushing this car it's, it's a really interesting vehicle to drive. Now the manual's gearing definitely doesn't feel as performance oriented as the last SI that I drove. The manual shifter also feels a little bit more notch or rubbery. It doesn't have kind of that slickness as I go through the gates. Um, it's still a relatively short throw. The clutch also takes a little bit of time to get used to. This clutch, I definitely was very close to stalling this vehicle at times when I first got into it because the manual is definitely different. But it's also a really fun to drive vehicle. I like the, I like the uh, manual transmission in the fact that it uh, has good gearing for the tractability of this engine. I like how it feels, I like how it performs. And this car is just really easy to drive. It's a Civic, so you expect, you expect all of that to be really easy to drive. Visibility is good, the seats are also comfortable. The seats feel pr practically the same as the last sedan that I drove, so the hatch doesn't have more aggressively bolstered seats, but I do love the fact that you can get it with a stick. This is one of the few that you can get with a manual, because remember, Mazda doesn't offer a manual on the three, especially with the turbo. If you're looking for the turbo engine three with the, with the manual, it just doesn't exist. So this being a manual and a turbo are one of the few options out there, and it makes it really, really appealing. A little bit less wheel spin there. <laughs> really chirps into second. All right, I got 8.67 seconds there. So mid eight second range for this car definitely isn't fast. The CVT is going to be significantly faster than this vehicle. Um, so buy the CVT if you guys don't want to drive manual. You also want the quickest acceleration times. The manual definitely is not gonna give that to you. I'll be curious to see what I can get in the next gen SI. Uh, I'll actually be driving the new SI sometime uh, next month in California. But this manual with the sport touring grade is fantastic. I mean, the car's ride is also really comfortable and supple. Even though we've got these bigger 18 inch wheels with the 235 width tires, the Civic has amazing ride and handling balance. So the steering is sharp, it's direct. It could use a little more feedback, which is probably what you'll get out of the, <laughs> out of the SI version of this car. But it's still a great car to kind of attack your favorite back road on. <laughs> it also really likes to rev. This engine now has exhaust VTEC and you can really tell. <laughs> it's also got good brakes. <laughs> Wrong gear there. All right, there we go, second. I mean, this is just a standard Civic, but you can really get a sense that Honda put a lot of thought into the engineering and into making even the base version feel a lot more sporty, a lot more fun to drive. And it, it sets a really high standard, a really high bar, of course, for the performance-oriented versions, because Honda's already confirmed the SI is gonna be coming in the fall. The Type R will be about a year away. And the whole you know, ambience of this car just feels sporty, it feels refined, just like the sedan, but unlike the sedan, we have a car that's also a lot more interesting looking, because I think the sedan is just too boring. 
Now, one of the cool thing about Hondas is when you get, even with the manual transmission, you still get all of their driver assistance tech. So this still has the Honda Safety Sense system um, or the Honda Sensing, and it also has lane keep assist. It's got rear cross traffic braking and has adaptive cruise control. Although the stop and go capability, I imagine, doesn't come down to a full stop with the manual transmission, but it's cool that you still get adaptive cruise control. Honda's safety system works fairly well. It's about on par with all of the other mainstream systems out there. But as we get onto this road here, just outside of Austin, which is one of my favorite roads to drive on, um, it's very curvy, it's very hilly. Uh, you can really get a sense of the chassis for this vehicle. And it's definitely limited by the tires. Like I could sense the tires start to give up before the actual chassis does. But like so much low end torque that this engine has, you know, I was expecting it to have more turbo lag, but Honda says they've retuned the 1.5 to give you more uh, tractability at the lower range. So it just feels quicker. I mean, now we've got 180 horsepower, 177 pound feet of torque. I can be in third here, just put my foot down. Plenty of power, not much of a sound, of course. So I'm hoping that the SI will fix that. Although the current, the previous generation didn't, it still has sounded like nothing. It just didn't sound great. <laughs> And it's just a really a joy. This is a joy to drive, even in just the standard Civic form. And I'm just really happy that Honda is staying true to their roots here. This still, in every sense, feels like a Civic. It still drives really well. It's still fun to drive. It's still comfortable. It has plenty of room. The tech in this car has also been hugely upgraded. If you guys are coming from the old hatch, really, if you guys are considering or you miss the fact that there's no more Golf, this is a really great replacement. If you're, if you're looking at a Mazda 3, this is also a great option. Honda's really elevated themselves here. They've raised the bar. Uh, and everything that I like about the sedan has basically been carried over into this hatch and you get the same back seat room. You get more space in the back. You have an interesting, a much more interesting look. So yeah, put this one at the top of your list if you're considering a compact car. So after spending the day driving the brand new 2022 Honda Civic hatchback, if you guys like everything that Honda has to offer on the redesigned 11th generation sedan, you're going to like the hatchback model even more. If you guys like the styling and you prefer the practicality of a five door vehicle like this, this to me is one of the best options that you can find in the segment. I think it's one of the best looking. It has some of the most impressive tech features. It has a wonderful turbocharged engine available with a six speed manual transmission and just the looks of this car. It definitely looks like an SI at times, even though Honda is probably not going to offer the SI in the hatchback configuration. And really my quibbles with this vehicle are few and far between. I do think that they need to expand the availability of the nine inch screen with wireless CarPlay on other trim levels. I shouldn't have to get this highest version to get it. And unlike most of its competitors, there is no all wheel drive or electrified option. It would be great to see Honda offer that. But if you are looking for a higher performance version, there is the SI coming this fall. And of course they have confirmed the Type R will be coming sometime early next year. Now, of course, if you're just just looking for a standard Civic, you don't care about the hybrid, you don't care about the electrified option, uh, you don't care about all-wheel drive. This is a great vehicle to get and it's a little bit more expensive versus the sedan. It starts at $22,900 plus like a thousand dollar destination. So this vehicle is about a thousand to nineteen hundred dollars more than a comparably equipped Civic sedan. Now of course this top-of-the-line sport touring grade has everything on it basically and you take your pick between either an automatic or a manual and of course the color option. This car starts at $30,400 plus destination. So it is, again, almost $2,000 more expensive than a comparably equipped Civic sedan. But I would argue that the hatch offers way more versatility and you also get the same space in the back seat and in the trunk space. So around $30,000, it is definitely expensive for a Civic, but it definitely also has technology and features in space that is more Accord-like. And it really goes with the much more mature operations, of course, of the completely redesigned 11th generation Civic. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the completely redesigned 2022 Civic hatchback. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews, like us on Facebook. And as always guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.